Hi there, my name is Michael Crossan and welcome to my channel. This is the second part in a series called Beyond the Manger. My title is Fact or Fairy Tale, The Virgin Birth. So if you have your Bible, will you turn with me please to Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 26 to 37. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And after having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice highly, favourite one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel how can this be since I do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you there also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. God always blesses the reading of his beautiful word. Heavenly Father, I pray for those who are watching. Lord, I do not know who they are, but Lord, I ask you to bless them and encourage them. And Lord, anoint me afresh. May I speak the words you want to say. In Jesus' name, amen. The famous talk show host, Larry King, was asked a question, who would you, out of all the people in history, would like to interview? He said, Jesus. To which the person asked him, what question would you say to him? He said he, that he, Jesus Christ, was indeed born of a virgin. For him, that is Larry King, that would define history for me. And for me, the Christian faith is based on truth. The letter T in the word faith stands for truth. In my opinion, my faith is built upon the truth. So how can, I be, how can I be sure of this? How can I know this to be true? You may say, Michael, you do know how babies are made, right? And yes, I do. And also my wife is a midwife in training. But out of the four Gospels, only two of them record the virgin birth. So what's so special? Well, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, writes of the incarnation of Christ as this. For me, it is the virgin birth, the incarnation, the resurrection, which are the true laws of the flesh and the physical. Death, decay, destruction are the laws, suspension of these laws. I am always astonished at this emphasis the church puts on the body. It is not the soul, she says, that will rise, but the body glorified. Athenaeus of Alexander, writing on the incarnation, says Mary's son, first had to be the child of the father in order then to become a man and be capable of taking upon his shoulders the burden of a guilty world. C.S. Lewis was a famous atheist until his conversion. He called himself a reluctant convert in, in England and he writes this, the central miracle asserted by Christians is the incarnation. They say that God became man. Every other miracle prepares for this or exhibits this, or results from this, just as every natural event is the manifestation at a particular place, a moment of nature's total character. So every particular Christian miracle manifests at a particular place, a moment, the character and significance of the incarnation. There is no question in Christianity of arbitrary and references just scattered about. It relates not a series of disconnected raids on nature, but the various steps of a strategical coherent invasion, an invasion which intends complete conquest and occupation. The fitness and therefore credibility of the particular miracles depends on their relation to the grand miracle. All discussion of them in isolation from it is futile. Now, in the Bible, most birth stories were not particularly heroic. For instance, take the life of Moses, although indeed his birth is, is one a story about how his sister and the, how he came into Pharaoh's house or King David or King Solomon. These are just three examples of the powerful stories of the Old Testament heroes. But 
they were less surprising or unusual. Yes, Jesus is often connected to David in the New Testament, yet there is no similarity in their birth stories. You see, what makes Jesus different because his birth fulfills a promise made over 700 years ago in Isaiah 7, 14. Mary did not know a man, and if she did, she would face social ridicule and indeed stoning. In addition, there is no other character from the Old Testament who was born of a virgin birth. Throughout the miraculous conception of the Holy Spirit, the characteristic, as one scholar knows of Jesus, conception is unique to Jesus and follows no pre-existing Old Testament pattern. Now, some of you might say, well, aren't all religions and some pagan mythologies given to these idea of a virgin birth? Well, Justin Martyr, in his dialogue with Trio, addresses these issues. It says this, given or says, or one scholar says about this, sorry, given the fact pagan mythologies utilize irregular, irregular spiritual birth narratives in describing the origin of their pagan gods, it is unreasonable to believe that early Jewish Christians adherents would, believe, would attempt to convert Jewish believers to Christianity by inserting anything into the story of Jesus that would draw even the slightest parallel to paganism. So what is so special about this verse? How can I prove it? Well, the Gospel writers, Matthew and Luke, accept it as a fact. The church universally accepted it as a fact. Now, Paul didn't mention it, but he believed it. You see, the virgin birth did this for us, did this for you and me. In his book, uh, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes this, The Son of God became man to enable men to become sons of God. You see, the difference between most other world or most religions, sorry, is this work for eternity, work for salvation. The gospel is this, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. We believe by faith and by faith alone. That's how we are justified. That's how we are forgiven. That's how we are made right in the eyes of God. The virgin birth, also in the story in the New Testament, shows how Herod the king, when the wise men came before him, wanted to ki kill all those infants and young children because he feared of this king. And that is a historical event. Jesus then fled, and Joseph and Mary fled into Egypt. Jesus was a refugee f fleeing from a genocide. So at this Christmas time, let us remember those refugees fleeing from persecution, political, or religious, or whatever it is. Because remember, Christ was a refugee. The virgin birth has touched the lives of many. Because the virgin birth, as Lewis states, was the beginning. First miracle of Christ's ministry. Because after this... All these different events happen. Simeon, the prophetess Anna, they see out of hundreds of children being dedicated to the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, and give glory to God. The shepherds and the wise men. Did Mary not ponder these things in her heart? Well, there's one important thing I want to draw to you as we close. When Jesus was being taken into a pilot and the kangaroo courts before the crucifixion, why would Mary allow Jesus to die for a lie if he was not the Son of God? If she did have a fling, which she didn't. Charles Colson, the famous uh, in the Watergate scandal, uh, who founded the Prison Fellowship, and you can read his life story. He says the most powerful man in America couldn't keep a lie for two weeks. Why would his disciples, who suffered, who were tortured, who were imprisoned, and who would die, die? for a lie. Using that model, why would Mary allow her son to die? Because she knew that Jesus was made to redeem us. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. I was lost in sin. You were lost in sin. It doesn't matter how good you are in the eyes of God, for we are all sinners. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Where do you stand with God this Christmas? My grandfather at the age of 74, and he was a character. 
he wasn't a Christian, far from it. Then one Christmas morning, he gave his heart to Jesus Christ 11 years ago. A life changed by God's love demonstrated on the cross. Do you know this love? Have you accepted this wonderful gift? See, this is not a fairy tale. This is a faith that transforms the lives of millions and billions around the planet throughout history. The greatest gift is Christ. For the Son of God became man to enable men to become sons of God. You are adopted into God's own family. The Apostle John writes this, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed or given to us that we should be called children of God. And we are called that by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So I pray that wherever you are, at home watching this on the phone, I pray that you will know the greatest gift of God's love and mercy and you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas. Thank you for watching with me. I just want to pray. And if you want to become a Christian, or perhaps you've fallen away from God, perhaps you did go to church, perhaps you did say, I am a Christian, I belong to Jesus, but life has knocked you back, and you want to get right with God, let's pray. And I just want you to repeat this prayer, and the only thing I'll ever ask of you is tell a Christian friend and a minister and get plugged in to a local church. That's all I'll ever ask of you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son who came in flesh, fully God, fully human, to take my sin and guilt upon his shoulders. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for keeping me. Help me to serve you. Help me to follow you. For your ways are better than mine. Lord, I trust you for all my days are in your hands. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray this devotional blesses you. And I pray as we look at this season that we remember the reason behind this season that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he's coming again soon. I pray this blesses you. Take care and have a lovely Christmas. God bless you.